let me move into something interesting. Now, when it comes to cloud, Amazon has been a pioneer. So there is no questions about it. We talk about and here we are specifically talking about public cloud only, not about private or hybrid. So Amazon has been a market reader with their AWS offerings and primarily they rolled out initially with the IAS front and then they have all the layers. They have platform as a service, they have software as a service, all of them. And a pioneer from the SaaS front, I would say is Salesforce because they were the ones first to roll out software as a service. But today, market leaders include Microsoft, IBM, and of course, Oracle has been catching up and they are very serious about the cloud business. And that's where we are here discussing about Oracle Cloud. Hybrid cloud strategy. Now, what is the meaning of this? Customers may already have their on-premise setup which they have with them, which they have invested upfront, or they have implemented their own private clouds, which is there. But still, they might consider moving certain applications onto the cloud because of scalability needs or because of the need that they find, I want to now go to a public provider because certain services I feel are not something I need to manage. Now, when the customer is going to do both using on-premise and public, this is called as a hybrid cloud strategy as far as the customer is concerned. Now, hybrid cloud was something different, but a hybrid cloud strategy is from a customer perspective as to how much are they going to invest in their own infrastructure and how much are they going to subscribe to services from a provider. So that's a typical term used in the market. Public cloud, typically multi-tenancy. Now, what is the meaning of multi-tenancy? When we have a cloud provider, let's take the case of Oracle itself. Oracle has set up its cloud, which I will represent by this box here. Now, inside Oracle cloud, there is hardware that the infrastructure that has been set up. So let me show these black boxes as the infrastructure that is set up. Now, as far as customers are concerned, I could have different customers all signing up to use Oracle Cloud. Now, each customer is a tenant. All of them are going to access the shared infrastructure. Typically, that is what cloud is, but Oracle does offer something called as bare metal cloud which is what is now called as OCI, which is what we are discussing. We'll come to that. So each customer being an organization will have their own tenant ID. So this could be ID one, this could be ID two. What is the benefit of doing this? Within the cloud infrastructure, which is set up by Oracle Cloud, Different customers can come and use it and also bear in mind each customer could have multiple users within their organization who will log in and manage the services that they're using and additionally there will be end users who will be using it. So that's an enterprise cloud that we are talking about and this is all managed using something called as IAM, Identity and Access Management, which we will come into later. So that's something one has to understand that there are going to be tenants and each tenant is typically a customer as far as the cloud provider is concerned. Okay, this is public cloud providers, who is doing what? This is a year old, but you can check out who is doing better today, etc. So this is an example of how a hybrid cloud offering was brought about by Cisco and Google put together. You can go through these links to know about hybrid cloud. And a hybrid cloud strategy from a customer perspective is what is listed here. Why should somebody go to cloud? Number one, we can see here, separation of the provisioning and usage of resources. Consumers focus on their business needs. Providers focus on setting up sufficient infrastructure so that customers can use it. So both sides get a benefit. 
and consumers only consume what they want they don't need to upfront procure whatever they are going to use in the long run as in when they need they scale up scale down and providers also can plan to see how much our customers using and set up the infrastructure accordingly from a customer's perspective capital expenses become revenue expenses capital expenses is where you invest upfront in hardware and software whereas operating expenses is only you pay for the subscription and more importantly look at this hardware purchases number one then taking space real estate in data centers power network all these have to be considered all this you don't need to upfront spend and a provider invest in all that and then he basically charges the customers so that he recovers those costs so a lot of benefits here standardization because every customer gets the same software so that makes it easier for software makers to release new versions from an organization perspective also i know i don't have too many operating systems flavors too many different hardwares everything becomes simple consolidation consolidation because i will now bring things into lesser number of servers and, and one of the reasons why this happens is also because of virtualization we'll come into that centralization and optimization that's one of the major reasons with cloud i only use what i want and i pay only for what i use and very importantly abstraction when you're going to the cloud you don't need to bother about what is being done by the cloud provider as such you have an agreement with the cloud provider and then you use you are least bothered about what software they're using how they are provisioning you need to be clear that what they promise is what they are delivering so you don't need to worry about how it is implemented and it is self service you don't need to send an email and wait for things to happen you on a few clicks you get things up and running so i already discussed about ias pas and saas when you take an ias offering customer makes a request and cloud provider has the infrastructure in place which he manages but everything else is to be managed by the customer in pass the platform is provided typically the cloud provider might be managing the platform or the customer manages that depends on the provider for example amazon has a service called rds relational database service in which the provider manages the databases the customer does not do anything there on the other hand from oracle in the case of platform oracle does not manage the database they expect the customer to manage it's more than saying the customer expects it because they want flexibility in terms of managing it and when we come into applications typically it is managed by the provider and then any customizations and changes they want can be managed by the customer so here is an interesting question why do you think cloud computing has become popular in the recent past and uh, we are all here sitting learning this any guesses number 1 security was a big challenge and with providers having been there for quite a while and customers using it so they know it's actually a myth that security is a challenge because anyway you were on the network and things were provided and providers are giving ways of secure implementations and we will see how oracle cloud provides that so you don't need to worry about that so the, it was a myth which has got baff, which has got demystified so customers are okay to go with the cloud and second more importantly the network access which includes the various internet service providers and leased line connections etc you might say have all improved to a considerable extent which makes it easy for anybody to access services over the network so both are reasons and maybe more reasons one of the primary couple of reasons why cloud computing has become popular i have a question yes please uh, so back to your first reason being security mm -hmm. uh, my organized um priorities when i'm taking this call because we plan on going into cloud and uh, one of the um, major concerns is that security is a problem mm -hmm. and um, 
if you remember not too long ago, Amazon had a brick, and um, it has happened to an organization still. Mm -hmm. There's always some kind of breach that, um, and the fear that um, data is not secure because it can be breached online um, easily, or not as easily as it used to be, but it can still be breached. Right. So that's one of those discussions that we are having with Oracle uh, to see if um, you know we should do some kind of hybrid, have some things on the cloud, and maybe keep something on premise because of this concern. Because even uh, one of the um, sales people did admit that um, uh, there is concern from other customers when it comes to security breach. So I don't know if it's a myth, but it's something that um, I, yeah happened. Uh, sure, I'm not saying no, Jay, 100%. What I'm saying is people were worried, how can I give my data outside my data center? But they realized that it is not as bad as I thought. It is better off, but I'm not saying it is completely safe. It's not like a situation where nothing will happen. But the question I have is, there are two fronts. It's like when you're taking a cloud provider's services, you still depend on what they do to safeguard your data. Whereas if you have your on-premise equipment, you decide how to secure it. So obviously there is complete control in your hands if you go with your own implementation which will not be the case if you go with the cloud provider. But at the same time, it's not like anybody and everybody will be able to access the data when we go with the cloud provider. So typically, initially, people were worried, if I go to the cloud provider, will the cloud provider uh, employees be able to see the data, etc. All those kinds of initial challenges were there. And of course, yes, the entire setup is set up in somebody else's uh, data center, regulatory concerns, everything is there. But that has come down. It's not such an open problem. But the other way to look at it is that even if you were to have complete control, can we say nothing can happen here? That also cannot be told. There is no such guarantee. But yes, you are reducing the risk by keeping it with your own hands. So I perfectly agree. So that's why the whole idea behind a hybrid strategy comes into play. So in the hybrid strategy, whatever is your core business activities, customer keeps it on premise. And whatever are non-core business activities, people are going to cloud. Now I can give you another example. Now Amazon primary business is not the cloud. That's something that came up later. They are into logistics and selling things. Uh, do you know a secret here? Customers who are into the business, which is a competition to Amazon's web stores and logistics, don't want to use AWS as a provider. They're just afraid, if I put it there, if Amazon is going to keep it in their hands, now I'm at risk. So they don't go to Amazon, they go to other providers. So, so that's an organization's strategy.